what is going on my friends it is i punk panther and today i'm back with a special video so today i'm going to be replacing the d-pad and my controller uh, my d-pad seemed to wear out and pretty much all of my controllers i actually tried making this video once before already and i already put a new d-pad in this controller but here are some examples of how the d-pads wear out so this is the new fresh one you can see it has everything all the dots in it uh, this one came out of my old, my older controller, my black one. It was a earlier model of PS4 controller. And literally as I just kind of fiddled with those little buttons, they just broke right off. So yeah, that one was really worn out. And this was the one that I originally removed from this one. So yeah, I mean, these D-pads do wear out and I'm sure Fighters is mostly to blame for that considering it's the only game I really used the D-pad for. So... I, like I said, I put a new D-pad in this already, but for some reason, apparently it's the wrong D-pad for this model. So I tried putting it in my other black controller. It doesn't work well in that one either. In fact, it works worse than this one. So I paid $17. I paid like six bucks for three D-pads, like the one that I put in here as a replacement. And those don't seem to work. So I spent $17 on this kit that's meant specifically for this model. Um, let's see if I can get it here, but the K C Z C T to you says it's for this model. I hope this D-pad works as they say it will, since it says it's for this model. So before I get started here, I am going to, so a thing about these D-pads is they have little holes right here where you would place them on holders inside the controllers. But for some reason, all of them, including this one, that hole is not, it's, it's covered in silicone, so we have to poke it out, and then I will uh, try to remove the excess silicone left over. So I'm going to poke it out this, I, I don't know if this is, if you're supposed to do this, but the original one I removed from my controller, the holes um, were open already. So I'm going to put, put this screwdriver through, and then I'm just going to use a knife to try to cut off some of this excess silicone and just run it around like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just enough. Hopefully that doesn't stretch the hole out. Seems okay. I don't know if we necessarily need to remove the excess, but it's better to do this and leave no questions. So I don't have to open the controller again and try it all over. You know what, I'm actually I'm not gonna do all four. Just because I, you know, I think that's probably overdoing it a bit. So, all right, let's start this process and start getting this controller open. I had a screwdriver, but this one's probably better fitted for these screws. And this will go a lot easier now that I know what I'm doing. And the controller was much, I've already opened this controller like twice already. And it was much tougher to get apart. Oops. It was much tougher to get apart the first time I took it apart, but after that, it didn't give me as much trouble. I don't know if this screwdriver is magnetic. That would be a big help. It is. Very good. So you guys might see some cuts here and there, and that's probably because my camera will get overheated, so I'm trying to make this video seamless as possible. Oh, but I'm, I may not be able to show every single step as I'm doing it because of that. But I'll be sure to let you guys know what I did. This isn't really a how-to video, but I guess you can use it as one. So I'm just starting by removing these four screws from the back of the controller. From here we can kind of, you can see the, the, the line of the controller here. I'm going to place my thumbs underneath the thumbsticks area. And just kind of place my hands like this and push on them. And that'll kind of get the controller separated. Now we have to be careful when we separate it, because there's a ribbon. Oh, I always feel so bad to open this. Um, there's a ribbon right here, and we have to be sure just to pull that out. There we go. Don't need that anymore. So now we have the battery, and we can just pull that out. Well, we can separate the ribbon, or the connection first, just pull this out, grab it by the white part, and just be careful pulling it out. Yeah, don't pull it by the cables. 
I think that's probably pretty obvious, but... And then we're just going to remove this screw here. Um, the older models, the screw, you don't have to remove it first, but on the newer ones, the screw is placed over this battery holder here. So you have to remove the screw first um, before you take it off. And the newer ones, you can... There's just a hole here. It doesn't really hold. It just it shows you the screw, but it doesn't really hold anything. Okay, now we can pull that out. And right here, there's another ribbon. You just pull it, it out by this blue tab. Make sure I kind of fit it through the hole here so we can pull the rest of this out. Here we go. Okay. All right, guys, well, this is basically where we need to be. So this is the new one I mentioned. This was the original. Now I tore this one up a little bit when I was uh, observing and after I pulled it out. Yeah, this is the new one that I just recently put in. It works okay. But one thing I did notice, which I don't know if it matters, but these, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if my camera will focus. It ha these have this little cross pattern on them when uh, these don't they do have little holes but I think that might be because of the, the way they were packaged I don't know if they're supposed to have these little circles in them this was the one I originally pulled out it has kind of like a Phillips head look on it flathead so I don't know they all feel roughly the same this one feels this is the new the one I just took out it might be a little less flexible but I really, it's really hard to tell. So we're just gonna fit this over this side downwards and place it over this little outlining here. So I'm really hoping this makes a difference, otherwise it's just a waste of seven, $17, which I will be very disappointed. I don't know, that D-pad I just took out, I had some decent luck um maybe it just need to be broken in but the diagonals were like really bad it just didn't feel good at all my um air dashes and whatnot just didn't feel good I'm sure this thing is on as good as possible just kind of press it down with the screwdriver make sure everything is tight so yeah here's the little holders i was talking about when i punctured those silicone holes doesn't seem like it really removed the excess too well but we did puncture them. Okay, I'm just making sure this is on here as good as possible. Alright guys. Well, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. So let's start reassembling. Really surprised my camera's lasted this long. So we're just going to plate this back in and make sure we get this ribbon threaded back through that hole. Um, this part's actually pretty annoying sometimes. It's not too bad if you, you can kind of just take a screwdriver or something and guide it through. So there we go. Settled back in. Place, oh, wait. See, I'm placing that screw in there because before I put this in, because I'm that's how it's done on the older models. It can really be done either way. In this model, you can see this hole kind of gets deep, so the, the screw can uh, hold it down. The older models just there's just a hole, but the screw just goes right through it. Make sure we get this real tight. Yeah, I had some good screwdrivers that I used. They were old screwdrivers that I just had lying around that I used for old iPhone repairs. And they worked pretty well, but I was afraid they might strip the head of the screws. So this one was sent with the kit I bought. This is the kit I bought, by the way. It's supposed to be for this model controller. Kind of expected it to be in nicer packaging considering uh, $17 with shipping or tax. So yeah, if this D-pad doesn't work, I'm uh, not going to be too happy with this purchase, but I guess it's the best I'll get. So now I'm just going to, before I put this casing back on, I'm going to make sure I connect the ribbon 
I might not be able to show you guys that too well, but here's where I'm going to be inserting the ribbon. Uh, if you're doing this replacement and you're not sure which way the ribbon's supposed to go in, just uh, you see where these like lines are uh, on the ribbon. Just look into your controller. You're just going to place whichever side the lines are on it towards the where you can see those tiny pins in there. I know the first time I took this apart, I wasn't sh quite sure, but maybe that's uh, obvious to some people. It might be difficult to get in, but you'll just kind of have to work it in there. It's definitely, this is definitely like a lot, lot harder the first time you try it, but it gets easier. So now I'm just, I'm afraid I'm going to bend the ribbon cable, but I don't think it hurts it too, too much. All right, so we're essentially done. I just got to put these screws back in. Try to pop this thing on here. It should kind of settle. Make sure the light bar fits through this little gray slot here. I actually bent it a little bit the first time I tried this, but yeah, make sure that just lines up. And it should, everything else should just kind of fall into place, pop on pretty smoothly. All right, so I'm going to start placing these screws back in here. And then um, I'm gonna boot up. Oops! I'm gonna boot up some fighters. Try this new D-pad out. Wish me luck, guys. I really hope it works this time. Here we go. I I don't have the most steady hands, but if I can do this, uh, anybody can. I'm really gonna be pissed if this D-pad doesn't work, guys. I really don't want to need a whole new controller just for fighters, especially when I I literally bought this one. I don't know within at least within the last year. So it's really silly, it wore out so quickly. Yeah, I could tell my up, that was my up E-pad, and I could tell it was wearing out. And sure enough, when I opened up the controller, the little hole, the little indention, where that black piece is, that magnetic conductor, it was uh, already torn. And I'll even, I'll show you guys how, how that might mess things up. I wish it would work anyways, but once they tear, they really aren't the same. To make sure these screws are all in here tightly squeeze the controller there we go all right well that is basically it let's uh boot up some fighters and uh test it out but uh yeah guys like like here's the broken one so what happened is this one tore basically along well you can see this one's tearing that's not supposed to come out like that um yeah this one was starting to wear out too See, these don't, these other ones don't, don't pop out. Um, basically, that was what was happening with this one. I just tore it out. What happens is these are supposed to, you know, like pop. You know, you place it over the D-pad, and when you press the D-pad, this pops in, and I guess touches that conductor, which lets the controller know you're pressing that direction. And when these tear like that, they don't have the same resilience. See that one? It's torn. So now when I'm pressing it in, it's not popping out, and it just loses its, you know, loses its uh, elasticity and consistency. So all right, guys, I'm gonna end the this part of the video here. I'm gonna test out some fighters real quick. Hopefully it works well. If not, I'm gonna be pretty upset. But we'll have to make it work, I guess. So all right, guys, here it is. Moment of truth. All right, y'all, no moment of truth. There's some King of the Hill over here. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting on this practice to load in, and we will see how well this D-pad works. Took my microphone off so you guys could hear the volume a little bit. Seems really good, actually. Well, it seems better than the others, at least. Now, mind you, I'm playing with one hand. Oh, sorry. Mind you, I'm playing with one hand. So... Yeah, this seems a lot better than the other ones. Absolutely, yeah. My problem with the other ones is they were a lot less sensitive. So, like, my biggest worry really was, like, if I was down backing, let's say. Like that. See how it's kind of going up? Now, the other ones were worse. My worry was is I'd be down backing and the controller would read me as just holding back because the diagonals were very stiff. So, looks like this controller's at least, or this D-pad's at least better. I'd say I guess it's worth the $17 over buying a whole new controller. So yeah, I guess overall, this was a success. Um, 
that worries me a little bit. See, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just doing circles. And I don't know what it looked like before. That seems a little weird. If I go slow, if I go really slow, I can kind of get a perfect circle. That may just take some time to get broken in, you know. It is a brand new D-pad. It's kind of stiff. So, so I guess we'll see. It'll have to work. I mean, either way, I'm still going to second fighters, so I don't know if it really matters all that much. But I'm glad to have a new D-pad. I think it's probably better than the one I was just using in my last video. So uh, I would say this is a success. So uh, anyhow, guys, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, as always, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this different video. I thought it was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed making this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a good year. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I love it. Please subscribe.